Hello guys, welcome back to this tutorials on programming computational fluid dynamics. Today we'll be talking about the overall structure of CFD code. Uh, so here on the left hand side, I have written down all the steps that are involved in writing a computational fluid dynamics code. This code uh, structure which I have given, it's like a pseudo code uh, and it is common to uh, many times types of code uh, immaterial of whether it is a structured code or an unstructured uh, mesh it will almost remain same most of the steps are going to be very very identical so let us look at this uh, code uh, this pseudo code and the various steps which are involved in this code and uh, simultaneously i'll be uh, trying to demonstrate what this means towards the uh, on the right hand side so obviously we start at the beginning and we'll start from the main uh, main function uh, in java so first thing is to create a data structure or a grid and then second step is to populate the geometry information in the data structure so the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to create an array of let us say this small containers which we call as objects named cell so this is going to be an array of uh, many cells uh, so also this will involve the ghost cells plus the internal cells and each of this cell will be having those properties which we talked about last time uh, like the variables in this case it is u and then it will have the x variable then it will have the oh yeah not x i think we named it cx then we will have the dx and so on and so forth uh, this u is going to be an array i'll talk about that in a little bit uh, now the second step is to populate the geometry information that means we are going to populate these two uh, variables here we are depending on the location of the cell we are going to uh, set up cx and dx value obviously dx initially will not uh, since we are going to consider a uniform mesh we will have dx constant but nevertheless we have used uh, dx in each of the cell just to make sure that we are capable of uh, having uh, non-uniform mesh okay so the next thing would be to populate the cx and dx then after that we will initialize the solution variables that is in each cell we will have a different value of u depending on the initial data so let me just uh, plot it like say some distribution for each of the cell this is like considering that this vertical axis is u so once this is done each of this cell will have its corresponding value of the uh, variable that is u now we set up uh, okay then before uh, starting with our actual calculation we write down this initial data into a file uh, so that we can later on after we get our final solution we can compare it to find out uh, how much our solution has changed or what has happened to the uh, initial data so then we set up time equal to zero uh, then we calculate uh, we set up this variable called last time step equal to false we'll talk about this variable uh, little later then we calculate dt now dt is based on the current number so what does it mean is uh, the okay i i think i should have mentioned uh, the equation that we saw last time was del u by del d plus a del u by del x equal to zero so this is the equation that we are trying to solve here a is the advection velocity as we uh, talked about last time so it is the velocity right so velocity is nothing but distance upon time right so uh, this is the velocity at which the waves are going to travel and we are going to take a positive initially so uh, the waves are going to travel that is information is going to travel from left to right so uh, let us say uh, obviously we know that uh, this distance uh, let us consider this is x axis so this distance between two cells 
is delta x. So uh, the distance is delta x and we need to calculate the time. We know a so obviously uh, time that is delta t that is the small time Let me write this in delta, t. Uh, delta t is going to be equal to a divided by oh sorry not equal to delta x it's going to be delta x divided by a but since a can be positive or negative let us take absolute value of a just to make sure uh, that this denominator is going to be always positive we know that delta x is always positive so delta t will always be equal to positive delta t obviously cannot be negative right okay so based on that we will calculate our dt and we will also multiply this by the quran number okay this will decide the scaling of our delta t once this is done uh, if the current time plus dt uh, is more than the stopping time then we are going to uh, say that okay we cannot take the full delta t what we got from this equation we have to only stop at stopping time so stopping time minus time will give us the final uh, delta t this will happen only at the last time step and therefore we will set the last time step equal to true which will be used later on for breaking out of the loop Okay, now here is the main part of our calculation. Now we will do say n number of uh, RK steps. So for each of these steps, we have to reconstruct our variables. Well, we talked about this reconstruction earlier. Let us briefly look at it earlier again. Uh, now we have this distribution. Right? Now based on this distribution, we may try to uh, fit some lines here in, uh, if we consider first order then it is simply a horizontal line that we try to fit from this uh, uh, this point into this point they like this horizontal lines and then uh, based on this we will have our uh, two states at each interface right and this then will be used to calculate the flux that is uh, going from this cell to this cell Right, so once this flux is calculated, we will then add a particular quantity. Depend so depending on how much flux or how much quantity is flowing from this cell to this cell, we will add that much into this cell, and we will subtract it from this cell. So basically, we will be like moving data uh, some. Uh, we will be moving some quantity from this cell to this cell. So we'll keep track of how much is moving from this cell to this cell, and we'll add or subtract. We'll subtract uh, from this cell, and we'll add to this cell, and this will keep on continuing till we reach our final stopping time. Okay. Well, the number of uh, RK time steps will actually. Okay, let me quickly do this. So let us say we are at some uh, time level n, and we are interested in going to time level n plus one. So before from while going from time level n to n plus 1 that is uh, we have some solution at uh, the initial uh, time that we have already initialized now we are interested in going to the next time level so let us say each of our cell has got u and we are interested in going to the new u so n plus 1 intermediate leap so before we uh, I mean while going from n to n plus 1 we take number of steps so these are like pseudo steps which we take to go from n to n plus 1 so this are termed as the rk steps or runge gutta steps okay so the way we will be implementing this is we will be defining u as an array so i i think i talked about this a little while ago i just told i'll be explaining in detail later so this will be an array and the size of this array is going to be the number of RK steps, let me write number of RK plus 1. Right? Why plus 1? Because we are interested in saving the intermediate steps, plus we have to also save this n plus 1 state before we go to the next time step. Okay, so that is going to be done in this loop. So for each RK step, we will be doing the reconstruction. 
will be setting up the uh, uh, i mean will be calculating the flux and we will be updating the cell average well i have forgotten one thing here and it's a very important thing so let me uh, do that first uh, so it's going to be coming here so we have to apply the boundary conditions we have to apply the boundary conditions before we reconstruct the variables and this has to be done for each and every rk step okay so there is one more thing which i have forgotten so before i go back to this axonal let me write it so at this point of time our time has progressed so we have to increment our time as well right so at this point of time our time will be whatever time we had plus dt so okay i hope that's uh, clear now um, yeah this step is where we are now so now we copy our cell averages from time level n plus 1 to 0 so now at the end of this uh, steps we would have found new values for this level that is you and number of arc steps plus 1 would be now uh, set up with the new values for after that delta t step right this is this distance you can say is delta t so after that uh, delta t step we would have got the new values now we have to copy this values to this value back so that we can do our next time iteration so next uh, uh, iteration in time so that is done at this copy cell average to level 0 okay so after that uh, yeah as i said we check whether it is the last time step that is uh, if this variable is set up then if that is the case we will break out of the loop and we will write our final data file into this uh, into a new file uh, okay uh, i think that is all i wanted to discuss the important uh, message that i would, would like to pass here is this flow is going to be common irrespective of the kind of mesh so even when we are going to so this is one d obviously the one which we discussed right now, right now when we go to uh, higher order schemes that is uh, when we instead of having this horizontal lines we might try to fit this data with some uh, higher order uh, polynomials in that case also this flow is not going to change only this reconstruct variables the Uh, we are going to write this as separate functions in separate classes so only this particular uh, function and the uh, procedure inside that is going to change the basic procedure or the basic over, overall flow of this program is not going to change also not only that when we go to say two dimensional uh, structure also this flow is exactly going to remain same even when we go to unstructured mesh only here maybe initially some things will change however this flow is not going to change well obviously the way in which we apply boundary conditions the way in which we apply reconstruct i mean in the, in the way in which we do reconstruction is going to change the way in which we calculate flux might change and things might change internally but this overall flow is going to always remain same so just uh, in case there is any doubt in this overall flow just let me know in comments and i'll try to uh, answer those questions uh, well so let me stop here and see you all soon bye bye